So we work on burying beetles and they're interesting because they need a mouse for reproduction and they convert it into an edible nest for their larvae by shaving off the fur, rolling the flesh into a ball and burying it in a shallow grave. And all the while that they're doing this, they're smearing the flesh with fluids from their mouth and their anus. So they end up with a perfect gleaming sphere of flesh in which their larvae live. Now naturalists had known for more than a century that these fluids somehow arrest the growth of bacteria and fungi on the meat. So they clearly contain a natural antibiotic. But the puzzle was that when these fluids are sampled, the antibiotic seemed not to be there. And we solved this puzzle by looking at the fluids produced by the beetles when they were reproducing. And it turned out that then they did have antibiotic properties. And we showed in further work that the reason the beetle only produces these antibiotics when they breed is because they're costly to produce. So the more potent the antibiotics, the less likely it is that the beetle will survive and breed again in the future. So they just can't afford to produce them all the time. Now this finding was exciting to us because we were able to exploit the natural way in which the beetles turn their antibiotic production on and off to identify some of the genes involved. And that opens the door to identifying the antibiotic products themselves. The second reason why this is exciting is because the cost of producing these antibiotics explains why beetles carry mites and nematodes with them in their everyday life. And that's because these animals help the beetle by clearing the carcass of microbes. So it's a potential new mutualism which involves the burying beetle outsourcing this costly defence to other species. And then finally, it turns out that the beetles use these antimicrobials to restructure the bacterial community on the carcass rather than to wipe it out completely. And this is a puzzle that we're investigating now. It might be another example of outsourcing a costly defence to other species, or it might be a natural mechanism for preventing the evolution of antimicrobial resistance. And by deploying multiple natural allies, it means that there can never be strong selection for resistance, and if resistance does evolve, then counter-strategies can evolve too.